fully aware that it's snowing outside. And, and uh, if y'all would like, I can take a second offering right now, and I might think about cutting my message short. <laughs> y'all want to take a second offering right now? I go ahead and keep go ahead and preach. I'm just playing. We got guests in the house. He said, don't start that second offering stuff. Look. <laughs> Let's go to Second Chronicles this morning. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. So often, in the, uh, being a Christian, if we're not careful, we we'll start handling things the way the, the world handles things. And God constantly, through the person of the Holy Spirit, pushes us to handle our problems and our situations differently than the world does. So I want to challenge you this morning to uh, think about, biblically, how to confront challenges. And I'm going to give you uh, five things from the man Jehoshaphat in chapter 20 that he did that we can do the same thing to help us when we're confronted with challenges that seem to be bigger than we can handle. Amen? Amen. Starting with verse 1, it says, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them, other sides, the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. And behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat, the Bible says, what did he do? He feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. One thing I've learned in life, as much as I would like to say that fear isn't real, I would be lying. And there's so many times in my life that I have come across some things that have brought about fear. So I want to try to help you this morning through the word of God when fear kicks in, how to confront these challenges that cause us to have fear. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and thank you for your word. Thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give you five things that Jehoshaphat did. Are y'all ready to put them up for me? Y'all, y'all got them back there? Five things that Jehoshaphat did that we can do when we think that things look bad or, or we uh, are faced with challenges or obstacles that are uh, too big for us. The first thing that Jehoshaphat did was he ran after the Lord. He ran after the Lord. The second thing that Jehoshaphat did, this, this is important, he received a word from the Lord. He received a word from the Lord. The third thing that Jehoshaphat did is he showed reverence to the Lord. He showed reverence to the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat reigned was peaceful thanks to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord. And the last one is very vital. Jehoshaphat's reputation was good before the Lord. His reputation was good before the Lord. Mother Teresa said this. She said, I know God will not give me anything I can't handle. I just wish that he didn't trust me so much. (laughs) Life gets like that sometimes. Um, Pressure, burdens, weight, concerns, sometimes squeezes the life out of us. We have adversity, sickness, enemies all these things will 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 bother us at times the old people well I shouldn't say the old people my daddy used to say my daddy used to say that 
too much pressure will bust a pipe. And he's always telling me that, he says, son, too much pressure will bust a pipe. And I used to wonder what in the world he's talking about. And then when I got older and got a family and trying to be in a ministry, man, it's a lot of pressure. And if you don't learn how to handle the things that's going on in your life, you're going to bust. What I like about the Bible is that you, it, it's, it's, it's life-changing when, when you take the word of God and you look at it from the perspective of these were ordinary people that God was just working in their lives. And sometimes we look at these people that are in the Bible and we think it's something special about them. But in reality, they're just men and women like we are. And if we would take and, and look at what the Bible has said and look at what God did in these individuals' lives and we put our faith and trust in the same God and do what God is telling us to do, we can expect the same results. So here, I want you to look at Jehoshaphat's life and hopefully we can apply these five lessons to our lives as we go through the rest of this week and see how we are to have, handle challenges that come our way. Now, the first thing I want you to notice about Jehoshaphat is that his life was good. If you go to 2 Chronicles chapter 17, look at verse 3. 2 Chronicles 17, verse 3, it says, And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat, because he walked in the first ways of his father David. And Jehoshaphat, he didn't seek after Balaam, the Bible says. But he sought after the Lord of his father, and he walked in, in God's commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established his kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat's presence. And what did he have? Man, life was good for Jehoshaphat. And not only was life good for Jehoshaphat, but the Bible said that he did everything right. Wouldn't you like that to be said about you? Jehoshaphat did everything right. He was loyal to God. He, he was committed to the ways of God. It said he didn't go after Balaam, didn't chase after Balaam. Because of, of, of Jehoshaphat's relationship with God, look what the Bible says in verse 10. 2 Chronicles 17, verse 10. Because of Jehoshaphat's relationship with God in verse 10, it says, And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the what? So that they did what? They left Jehoshaphat alone. Y'all get that? You can live a life, uh, uh, this Christian life in a way where people won't mess with you. You can. Because they know that, that, that what they, you know, it got to the point on my job, it got to the point that people stopped messing with me because they knew everything they would try to do to irritate me, it wasn't going to work. That's how you want to live your Christian life. You want to get to the point that you're walking with God to the point where even your enemies will be at peace with you. That's what the Bible says. Here, Jehoshaphat, I mean, life was good. Go back and read chapter 17 for yourself. Jehoshaphat, life was good. But then something happens in chapter 18. And it would behoove us to pay attention to what happened in chapter 18. And for the sake of time, I can't spend a lot of time there. But what happened is Jehoshaphat align himself up with King Ahab. Now King Ahab was a wicked man. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through all this because it's snowing. I'm going to have grace and mercy on y'all this morning, but I wanted to give y'all a little bit of history, but I'm going to leave that alone. Go back and look at it though. His, his alignment with, with Ahab almost cost him his life. You go back and read chapter 18, you'll see because he started spending time with, with Ahab, it almost cost him his life. And for those of us, especially you young people, you need to understand it does matter who you spend your time with. Don't listen to the devil when he tells you it really don't matter who you spend your time with. Yes, it does. When I was a young man, I didn't listen. When, when church was going on, I wasn't paying attention. And I started hanging out with some wrong people, and it almost cost me my life. Almost cost me my life, almost cost me my freedom. But thank God for his grace and his mercy. 
And here, if you look at this story, Jehoshaphat was doing good, then all of a sudden he went from doing good to hanging around the wrong person, the wrong person almost cost him his life. And then in chapter 19, can't look at it all this morning, but go back. And then in chapter 19, God gives Jehoshaphat another chance to get it right. And here in chapter 19, we see Jehoshaphat trying to get his relationship back right with God. Anybody been there? You're doing good, then you start hanging around the wrong people, you fall off, and then you try to get your life back right with God. And then look at what happens in chapter 20. Here it is, he's trying to do right, trying to live right, and then in chapter 20, somebody brings some news to him. He gets word that there's a lot of people that's coming up against you. There's a lot of people that don't like you, man. And they coming. You see that in verse 2? I, I like how they described it in verse 2 because in, in verse 2 it said, Then there came some that told Jehos Jeho Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude. Man, they said it's a lot of people coming. And the Bible says in verse 3, what happened? Fear kicked in. Fear kicked in. Now, fear is a normal human emotion. And the Bible says that he was afraid. When this situation came up in Jehoshaphat's life, the Bible said that he feared. But this is where I want to hurry up and move on with this message. I want you to see the first thing that he did when fear kicked in. What did he do? He ran after God. We need to do the same thing that Jehoshaphat did when we find ourselves in situations that are too big for us. Seek the Lord. The word seek means to follow after to consult, ask for advice, ask for help. In a nutshell, it means we need to learn how to pray. We need to learn how to pray. It's too many, it's too many people in the church that's going through things and don't pray about it. When we talk about praying, we're not talking about praying for no two or three minutes and talking about, God, you know what I'm going through, I need you. No, we're talking about praying. And I love the fact that Jehoshaphat was a leader because this, 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 this is dear to my heart about this leadership thing and, 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 and knowing your role in the church and, and our position and, and paying attention to time and what we're supposed to be doing. In verse 4, it says, And Judah gathered themselves together to do what? You see what happened? Because the leaders sought God. What happened? Then the people sought God. So because the leader was praying, it led the people to pray. I like that. In verse 4 it says, even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. So here it is, because of Jehoshaphat praying, it led the, the people to pray. But I love looking at, at Jehoshaphat's prayer. Look at his prayer in verse 6. He said, O Lord God, our Father, art not thou God in heaven? He could Why he didn't just start off saying, Lord, you know I got all these enemies, these people coming up against me, I need your help. He didn't start off like that. He started out acknowledging God for who he is. He started quoting scriptures. He started re reviewing in his mind who God is. And he's starting to talk to God about who God is. And if you go through the rest of this, this prayer, that was his pattern. He was talking to God, reminding God of scripture, reminding God of things he'd done. He's letting God know, God, I know who you are. I'm trusting you. That's a pattern that we should have in our prayer life. Don't just go to God asking him for things. Go to God acknowledging and, and act, acknowledging who he is. I remember a few years ago, man, I was going through something. I had, y'all don't, a lot of y'all don't know, but I had surgery on my leg. Man, they started sending me these ridiculous hospital bills. One bill was like $12,000. The other bill was fourteen. I was like, man, what in the world are we going to do? Ain't got no money to pay these bills. 
I went, man, and then, then I had other stuff going on, and I went into my prayer closet because I was all worried about this, and I went in there to talk to God about my bills, and I started out like Jehoshaphat. And I started worshiping God, and I started talking to God about who he was and just worshiped him, worshiped him, worshiped him. And I got up, got up, walked out my prayer room, out my closet, got up, and got halfway in the living room and said, man, I ain't even talked to God about my problem. I got to go back in there. <laughs> and at that moment, I realized how powerful worship was because as I was worshiping God, I forgot about my problems. I forgot about my problems. Now here it is, four or five years later, can I tell you? I ain't even have to pay those doctor bills. But I'm telling you, fear kicked in. Man, I was scared, I was sweating. I ain't, I ain't know what was going on. But here it is, God took care of that. How did that happen? Because you got to learn how to pray and trust God. Now after Jehoshaphat sought the Lord, he received a word from God. I think this one is just as important as the first one. Because a lot of people don't hear from God. But I have to say this, I don't think it's God's fault. Oh, y'all quiet. I, I like that. Go ahead and be quiet. A lot of people say, man, God don't just talk to me like that. <laughs> I don't hear from God like that. A lot of times people just not listening. Because God is talking. People just not listening. Well, I think if you're going to be able to, to face your challenges in life, you're going to have to learn to listen to God. Quit calling your girlfriend, quit calling your uncle, your cousin, all these people, even the pastor. Quit calling them all the time. Get your line connected to God. God talks to people. He's in the relationship business. And don't nobody go out here misunderstanding me saying, Pastor Moore said don't be calling them. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is man comes and man goes. You can't be dependent on man. So here it is, Jehoshaphat went into prayer. He was having a, a challenge. All these this great multitudes coming up against him. He's having a challenge, and he prays about it. After he prays about it, then in verse 13, the Bible says, And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, uh, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, Ooh, Lord. A Levite of the sons of Asaph came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. With all that being said, here come this man of God. In verse 15, and this is what the man of God said. He said, hearken ye all Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he said, not just you people, but I need you, King Jehoshaphat. I need you to listen as well. And look at what he said. He said, thus says the Lord unto you. He said, don't be afraid. He said, don't be scared. He said, the battle ain't even yours. God said, I got this. Man, it's nothing like hearing a word from God. Nothing like receiving a word from God. One thing I love about this because he said, be not afraid. You got to understand there's going to be some times in life some things are going to come up and you're going to get scared. But I love what he said in verse 17. He told him, he said, don't, don't, don't trip about this because at the end he said the Lord going to be with you. God going to be with you. God got your back. Now can you imagine hearing these words and you Jehoshaphat? Because you just heard all these people are coming up against you. You just, now you're scared. And then all of a sudden you take time out and pray. And then all of a sudden the man of God stands up and says, man, don't worry about that. God got you. If I was Jehoshaphat, I'd be like, man, I knew it. Thank you, God. 
And if we continue to read, guess what? That's what he did. Don't underestimate the power of hearing a word from God. When life gets tough, guess what you need to do? Read your Bible more. When life gets tough, guess what you need to do? You need to stay in church more. When life gets tough, guess what you need to do? You need to turn on some preaching at home. Don't ever underestimate the power of hearing a word from God. I would encourage you to read this book. Boy, this book is life changing. It has the power to transform lives. Hearing a word from God will guide us from making foolish mistakes. Here it is, God steps in and God says, hey, I got you. And God promised them victory. Jehoshaphat receives this word. He believes this word. Leads us to number three, point number three. What did he do? Jehoshaphat showed reverence to the Lord. Look at verse 18. After Jehoshaphat received the word, in verse 18, the Bible says, what did Jehoshaphat do? He fell before the Lord, and what did he do? He worshiped him. Now, you got to understand this. This is real talk. The victory, ain't, the victory ain't done yet. But he's already worshiping God. How important is worship to you? And I love this because it says, the Bible says in verse 19, he was worshiping. But it says in verse 18, and all Judah did what? Y'all with me? In verse 18, who else joined them? All Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, everybody started to what? Here's that leadership principle again. Leadership is so important. Before his situation changed, but guess what Jehoshaphat was already doing? He was already worshiping God. Herbert Bateman said this. He said, authentic worship is a place of purity, a place of praise, and a place of passion in the very presence of God. <sighs> worship is so important to the Christian life. Now watch this. I don't know if these people were Baptists. I don't think they were. They could have been, but I don't think they were. Because look at what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse 19 that they stood up to praise God. Good Baptists don't stand up. Amen. They stand up. But that's what it said. That's what it said. They stood up and praised God. Hold on. And I don't think they was Baptists. Because look what else it said. What else it say? Oh, they were loud. Well, Baptists, we can't be loud. I'm going to get in trouble. Y'all going to try to tell Pastor me. I don't care. Y'all can tell him. He probably going to watch the tape, baby. I'm just playing, Pastor. Don't pull me to office. But these people might not have been Baptists. Because their worship was loud. They didn't care about who was around them. They worshiped God. They were like them people at them football games, basketball games. They, they really loved their team. You know, we love Jesus, but they really love their team. You know, they, it, their love for their team and our love for Jesus is a little, you know, it's a little different. Okay, I'm, I'm going to keep moving. I'll let y'all think about that for a minute. Let y'all think about that. So what did Jehoshaphat do? He, he ran after the Lord. Jehoshaphat received a word from the Lord. Jehoshaphat showed reverence unto the Lord. And then the next one I want you to see is Jehoshaphat reign was peaceful thanks to the Lord. Look at 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 30. 
The Bible says, so the rim of Jehoshaphat was what? Quiet. It was quiet. For his God did what? Now, how in the world could his, his reign be peaceful and quiet? Well, look at verse 20. How did this happen? Look at verse 20. Verse 20 says, after they got done worshiping, it says, and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Look at what he said do. What did he encourage them to do? He encouraged them to believe. He said, I need y'all to believe in the Lord. And he said, what God says is going to happen is going to happen. He said, I need you to believe his man. And then he said, you're going to prosper. So how did Jehoshaphat get to the point of having peace in his life? He believed God and what God said in his word, and he told the people to trust him. And by him believing and obeying God's word, it led to peace. And somebody here is saying right now, I don't have peace in my life. If you don't have peace in your life, it could be possibly that you not believe in God what he said in his word and you're not trusting God like you should. Prayer is so, so important if you're going to experience peace. You got to learn how to pray. You got to connect all this together because Jehoshaphat started off praying. Now the last thing Jehoshaphat did and I, I cut this thing short. I'm proud of myself because of the snow. <laughs> the last thing that Jehoshaphat did, Jehoshaphat's reputation was good before the Lord. Look at verse 32. Second Chronicles 20, verse 32. It says, and that he is Jehoshaphat. What did he do? And he departed what? And what else did it say he did? Now I need you to understand what the Bible just said. The Bible says that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Y'all got to get that. Go to Proverbs chapter 5 and look at verse 21. Proverbs 5 and look at verse 21. The Bible says, for the ways of man are before what? And what does God do? Ponder is all is going. Look at Proverbs 15 and verse 3. It says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. To do that which is right in sight of the Lord is a lot harder than doing that which is right in the sight of man. Because we can get ourselves together for a little while being in front of people. But it's a whole nother story to have everything line up in the sight of God. Because God is there when my wife leaves. God is there when my wife and kids leave. So if my good behavior is, is, is good because my wife and kids are home and as soon as they leave, I go to the computer and look at me some porn guess who's still there well if my reputation before y'all is good here at Bannister Road Baptist Church but then when I go to Jamaica which hopefully I'll be able to do someday soon go to Jamaica and nobody over there know me and I decide to do some things that are out of character y'all don't know it but guess who's over there in Jamaica See, so to have a testimony that you're doing everything right before the Lord is a big deal. Because with us, we, we have a tendency of cutting the lights off sometimes. <laughs> and doing some things in the dark, you know. And when you cut the light off, people can't see. They don't know what you're doing. But guess who sees in the dark? 
God sees what you're doing in the dark. Oh, you can go home and, and close the blinds and lock the doors, cut your phone off, and nobody on the outside knows what you're doing. But God knows what you're doing. So to have this reputation good before the Lord is a big deal. Now how do we have a good re reputation before the Lord? The only way that's possible, we have to start with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it is only through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ that a man or a woman can even start to trying to live a life pleasing to God. And once you put your trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit of God comes and lives inside of you. And then that sanctification process begins. And one thing I'm learning about this Christian life is that we need the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. We need him. And there's too many Christians trying to live this Christian life apart from the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And you can't do it. I've been guilty of times trying to live this Christian life in the flesh. And I failed time and time again. And I had to learn to, Lord, I got to surrender to you because I need your power. If, I, if I'm going to say I believe in your word, then I have to believe in every bit of your word. And in Romans chapter 6, we don't take that out of the Bible. Romans chapter 6 says that sin no longer has dominion over us. That doesn't mean that a man or a woman of God will be perfect, but there, it does mean that there should be some consistency in our life. Consistency. None of us will ever reach perfection until we get to heaven. But that's the goal. And we should constantly be aiming for that. And how is that going to happen? Through submitting and yielding to the Holy Spirit of God. So for us to have a good reputation before the Lord, I'm challenging you. Because I know for a fact, because I did it for so long, that we come to church and go home and do things that we are ashamed of and know that we wouldn't tell nobody that we're doing it. And we confess that and do it over and over and over again. But eventually, God wants to give you victory over sin. You can have victory. I'm not saying that you won't sin, but I'm saying sin won't have control over you. So to, to, to have a good reputation before the Lord, I want to encourage you. Lean on the Holy Spirit of God. When challenges come in your life, stay focused and do what Jehoshaphat did. Jehoshaphat ran after the Lord. So if I can encourage you to do anything this morning, when you are facing a challenge or an obstacle that's too big for you, run after the Lord. Learn how to pray. The second thing Jehoshaphat did is he received a word from the Lord. Read your Bible. Stay in church. The third thing that Jehoshaphat did, he showed reverence to the Lord. No matter what's going on in your life, keep worshiping and praising God. Don't allow that murmuring and complaining spirit to jump on you. Number four, Jehoshaphat reign was peaceful thanks to the Lord. Keep living by faith. Trust God's word and obey him. And lastly, Jehoshaphat's reputation was good before the Lord. Ask God to teach you how to live a spirit-filled life. The Bible says that those that are in the flesh cannot please God. I would encourage you to go look at Galatians chapter 5 if you don't know if you're in the flesh or not. But I can guarantee you all of us probably need to take a look in the mirror at times to see what we're doing and how we're doing it. I want to encourage y'all. Whatever you're facing today, I know we all got different challenges. We all have different obstacles. But I want to encourage you. Go back over these five things that Jehoshaphat do 
did and apply that to your life and see how much better your day will be. Amen. Just know that I love y'all. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word. Help us, Father God of the church, to, to trust your word more and to live our lives according to your word. Lord, if there's anyone here and they're not 100% sure that if they die right now that they will spend eternity with you, we pray that they don't leave here without accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ into their life. We're praying, Father God, by faith that they will give their life to you. Anybody that may be struggling, Lord, spiritually, we're praying, Lord, that they'll trust you. Lord, we're thanking you for all you've done in our lives and that you will continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.